How do we take that learning and decode and distill it into powerful ideas that connect with people and create real value in their lives? Data is, of course, important, but an idea, on the other hand, rooted in real-time insight, is worth its weight in gold. Let us now take a global look at the data of today and tomorrow and how to turn it into an idea. To introduce this seminar, please welcome Mark Tutsell, Chief Creative Officer of Leo Burnett. We are an ideas industry, and ideas, as we all know, are our currency and our lifeblood. Ideas ultimately are king, and they're the reason why we're here this week in Ken. Big ideas, small ideas, simple ideas, ideas that can change the world, ideas that transform human behavior. But where do we get those ideas from? The answer is usually all sorts of places from working with gifted creative people, from literature, art, music, news, culture, from chance encounters, stories, conversations, from imagination, and ultimately from life. Human curiosity has always pushed us to gather information, to try and make sense of our world. Let's take the Mayans, for instance. Oh, sorry. Let's take the Mayans, for instance who turned uh, their observation of the sky and the stars into beautiful and very precise calendars. Well, maybe not that precise after all. But anyway, all the Portuguese, Spanish, Italians explorers literally drawing the contours of a new world they were discovering 500 years ago. Or even Leonardo da Vinci. We all know the artist or the inventor. But what about the anatomist? He had to recur to science, desiccate corpses, to better understand the human body from inside, in order to take his art to another level. Or still, Charles Darwin, who traveled all the way down to South America to study, this, this, to study species, and conceived from his Tree of Life sketch one of the greatest creative ideas. So um, when we started approaching this, we wanted to embark on a bit of a journey. It was turning what was 2D and flat and pretty boring and quite frankly hard to decipher. And we wanted to inject some life in it and bring it to life and put a bit of energy around it so we can find the insight. So we went about it in a maybe quite surprising way. We took the three-dimensional route. Basically, it was turning 2D into 3D. Now, this wasn't just us trying to play pretty pictures for the sake of it. This is about making something much more solid, more robust, something you can kind of look into, peer around, spot the insights in, something you can kind of walk around. And this isn't just, you know, living our minority report kind of fantasies, flipping around a big 3D piece. What it means is we can find holes and trigger points and little moments in the data which born insight and then subsequently give us ideas. A good example of this, I guess, in practice is some work we've been doing in Australia and the spirits category and our client Bundaberg. Um, so briefly, spirits, lots of people are doing lots of work within data around spirits, um, and we were getting a lot of information back about brands and various spirit brands and their relationship with young male consumers, what they thought of it, how much empathy they had towards it. Um, and what we did was um, take such data and start putting it together, but we used a statistical technique, hard for me to say, uh, that actually... Um, gave it, turned it into almost a 3D map. Once we find that, then the world's our oyster. It's an infinite canvas. We have the ability to just use our imagination to create content that will inspire and move the industry forward. Interestingly, looking at some of the work for The Guardian, a brilliant 
brilliant piece of thinking, open journalism, which opened the door to a brilliant idea, a brilliant idea that captured the imagination of a, of a country, that reversed the fortunes of a brand, that drove that brand to the next level. It's those types of ideas that we seek every single day of the week, but we will only find them if we understand people.